Welcome to the testing board. In this session, we are going to understand debugging. So first of all, we need to understand what do you mean by the debugging. So I'm moving to my document and here, what is debugging? So debugging can be defined as a process to find out the point of error. I take an example of the manual testing, like I'm working as a manual tester and I was working on a login module and I found a bug. I reported that bug to my bug tracking tool which is Jira. Now bug is assigned to any developer to fix. For login module developer has written 1000 line of code or we can understand like 200 line of codes. So here what we can understand all the 200 lines are buggy or not so answer is no only one or few lines will be buggy because of that we are getting that defect so what developer is going to do if developer execute it complete module again so he will not be able to find out at which point or which line is giving this error what the developer will have to do developer will execute its code line by line and to find out the point of error, to point, find out the line of error. The process to find out the point of error or the line in which the error is coming, the process is called debugging. So debugging can be defined as a process to find out the point of error. Here we are going to use few more terms like bug fixing. So what do you mean by the bug fixing? So bug fixing means when we find out that particular line is throwing some error or because of a particular line or because of a particular logic, we are getting this error. When we fix that error, the process is called bug fixing. So in debugging, we are finding out the point of error or the line of error. And in bug fixing, we are sorting out that issue. To find out the line in which error is coming, we have to place breakpoint. So we have to place breakpoint and with the help of the breakpoint, we can pause the execution of the script at a predefined step. So like I have 10 line of code here, I can give you example, like I have 10 line of code and I know I'm getting error after the third line. So we can make this is a breakpoint. So with the help of the breakpoint, we can pause the execution of this step and then we can execute rest of the line one by one. So execution will pause over here. We can execute one line, then one line, then one line, then one line. With the help of that, we can find out the line in which we are getting some error. So that is my breakpoint. And the step execution means we are executing one step. So when we pause the execution, by using breakpoint, then we can use step execution means we are executing step by step. So these are the four terminologies we are going to use in this debugging process. Moving to SOAP UI. So here on the test case level, I'm on a test case level. Here we have a tab of debugging. One thing need to be noticed like we are going to get this tab only in the pro version that's my free version in free version if you check it so we are not going to get this tab over here so this debugging tab will be available only in the pro version for debugging we need to move on to this tab and now here we are on the debugging tab these are the all steps that we have in our test case so and i assume I am getting some error in my test case. I don't know which step is getting problem. For that, we can start debugging. Here we have two columns. One is the breakpoint and other is the test step. So first of all, we need to set up breakpoint. I'm going to the step two and right click over here, add breakpoint. So a breakpoint is added over here. Now I want to execute in the debug mode I'm running it and it will execute till step two and will pause the execution of this on the step two. So what we have understand about the breakpoint with the help of the breakpoint, 
with the help of the breakpoint we can pause the execution at the predefined step here we have seen we have paused execution on this step now what all the properties what all the details we have till this step so here on the right hand side we can see all the global properties which we have project properties context variable if we have defined anything on the context level property expansion so all the details will be displayed like test suite level properties test case level properties conditional execution and step one so these are the details of the step two step two so these are four variables we have defined on the step two here we have a step two we can check it all these variables i am coming back to here on the debugging so we can define all the levels over here we can check all the current details as of now now i want to execute my case step by step for that we have this step button so as we click on the step button it's going to execute one step and here we have seen few details has been changed which is going to be changed with each and every step now my step 2 is also executed so here we can check what are the details of the step 2 then we can execute one more step so you will see few more changes has been done so as of now we have we have executed only three steps and these are the details up to three steps by this way we can execute step a one by one at any point of time if you think like whatever the error i want to check i have already find it out that the error and i want to execute rest of the steps in one go we can execute the run step immediately so as we click on this run step it will execute all the rest of the steps here we have seen what is debugging with the help of the debugging we can find out the point of error breakpoint we can pause the execution at the predefined breakpoint step we can execute one step bug fixing if we find any issues we can fix it if you want to remove this breakpoint we can remove this breakpoint we can disable this breakpoint means remove means it will be permanently removed disable means we are just disabling it later on we can enable it like this apart from it we have one more i'm going to enable it so that is enable breakpoint we have breakpoint properties one of the most important feature that is breakpoint properties so you can make this breakpoint to execute conditionally like as of now whenever we are executing this test case in the debug mode it's going to execute this breakpoint but we can execute our breakpoint conditionally conditionally means if you want you can define a condition over here like if the value of a we have any variable which is a if the value of the a is more than 10 only that pause the execution so here we have seen on the properties tab we have a variable which is 10 i'm going to my test case level and here i have defined a breakpoint and i'm setting the property only execute this breakpoint if the value of a is greater than 10. let's check it again because as of now my value is a is equal to 10 but i'm setting this breakpoint a is greater than 10. so now i have two breakpoints one is a conditional breakpoint and other is the normal breakpoint in conditional breakpoint only pause only work when we have a greater than 10 in the current case we don't have a greater than 10 because value of the a here in the properties is 10 so i'm going to execute in debug mode and here we see it is not paused at that particular breakpoint it moved to the next breakpoint because the condition was not satisfied so we have added a breakpoint that will execute only a particular condition is satisfied if i want to execute all the steps then execute the rest of the steps 
I'm removing this breakpoint and making a normal breakpoint. So I'm going to the breakpoint, breakpoint condition, and I'm removing this condition. Okay, right. So now we have two breakpoints and both the breakpoints are normal breakpoint. We did not add the conditional breakpoint. So I'm going to show you now how my script is going to execute when we added multiple breakpoints. In this case, when we execute it, first it's going to pause on a first breakpoint. Now my execution is paused on the first breakpoint. We can execute here step by step. So here's the step button. I'm executing one step. I'm executing one more step. Now I want my step will execute till second breakpoint. So as we click on this run button, all the steps will execute until we reach to the second breakpoint. Again, you can execute one step. So I'm executing or you can move to the next breakpoint. So as we click on this, it will move to next breakpoint. And now again, one step or all the steps. So here we have executed all the steps. So here we have seen we can make multiple breakpoints and we can either jump between the breakpoints or we can step or we can execute step by step. Here in the current case, we have three breakpoints we executed either step by step or jumping to the next breakpoint. Now I'm executing it again and one more option that we want to see here. My execution is paused on a first breakpoint. You want to cancel the debugging so you can cancel debugging as you cancel my execution will halt means my execution will stop over here. I don't want to debug now. If you want to debug again, we have this breakpoint. We can enable these breakpoints. We can add these breakpoints and we can run the execution in the debugging mode. If you want to remove the breakpoints, we can remove it over here. So I have removed all the breakpoints again, enable disable we have covered. So that's all we have for breakpoints in the SOAP UI. Again, that is used for the debugging means if we have multiple steps and I found like my case is getting failed and we have to find out for which step or because of the which step my test case is getting failed, we can go to a particular step or we can run it in the debug mode. On the real time scenario, mainly we require debugging when we are picking the data from the external sources. So it might be the condition we are going to pick data from the database and we are going to use the data in that particular test step or all the test steps. We will face the condition my steps are getting failed Failure could be because of the different reasons. It might be possible my step having some problem, but it might be possible we are not getting data from the database. So in that cases, we are going to use debugging. When we execute in the debugging, we can easily find out what all the data we have till particular point. So like what all the global properties we have, what all project properties we have, uh, then suite properties, case properties, so every data which is coming from external source will be displayed over here as well. That's all we have for the debugging. Thanks for watching this video.